So just kind of walk us through, you, you've continued to take diagonal forward sections, right? Not, not real yes. vertical, not real horizontal. Mm -mm. Yep. Just diagonal and forward. Here. And then when I take texture out, it's most on the very ends, just because that section keeps getting thicker as my U shape gets a little bit steeper. Right. And when you're texturing like that, when you work towards the outside or get closer to the ears, you're leaving that hair longer, correct? You're just texturing there. You're not removing it, making it straight across. Correct. Still a little bit longer right there. Do you find if you have someone who comes in with long hair and they want a significant amount cut off, uh, you just remove the bulk and get it out of the way and then perform the haircut instead of yes. sectioning out all? Yeah, I definitely do that just because I like to say it works smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, especially my thick curly hair girls. So most of my clients are ethnic so they have a lot a lot of texture in their hair natural texture and very coarse textured hair as well so they always come in with this tremendous amount of hair <laughs> and so sometimes just removing all the weight first is the easier option so that you have a little bit less to work with especially for something like this where you really want to see what you're doing How long does it typically take you to to hair to do this haircut on a client in the salon? Forty five minutes. Just to be that clear, does that include the style? Yeah, yeah it includes or... the wash, the style, and the blow dry. All right, about right here, I stopped doing the natural fall part. And I do like to use my comb as my guide. I pull down and I slightly go longer than everything else I just did. I still like to really notch in there and point cut because I'm not gonna texturize this section. This is where my blunt look starts to really come into play. But I still want a slightly diffused line rather than it looking more like a block section. Have you always used a swivel shear? I have. So I made my parents buy me swivel shears the second I started school because I started getting really bad thumb and wrist pains. I think this is a really <laughs> great. That's great. This, uh, the reason I bring it up is this is a really good angle for people to see how that, that swivel thumb allows you to go in there and point cut and keep your wrist and elbow low and in a natural position. Oh yeah. So if you don't, so I if you don't, my wrist three times in high school. <laughs> and so it has very little mobility. I can't move it very much without it really hurting and straining it. So I love the swivel because it 
able to keep me comfortable all day long, especially on my work days where I'm working like 12 hours a day. And especially on the thick haired clients. I mean, you think about it, you're foiling, coloring, blow drying, everything involves your wrist motion. So the last thing you want to do is strain it even more while you're cutting. That's why it's important to, to, to just, that's why we love giving people information about a swivel shear. Uh, understand almost everybody does a swivel shear now. That's not about shark fin. We're not the only company that does it. It's about understanding the ergonomical benefits, the ergonomic benefits of a swivel shear. And you see it there and you heard it from, from Montana. Oh yeah, you'll never find me with a shear that doesn't have a swivel on it that's been a deal breaker since day one. If they don't sell a swivel shear, I will never buy it. Slightly longer on that side. These cuts are really important to keep checking that they're even. That's where that common mistake comes in where I've noticed for my cut corrections, it's always one side is a lot longer than the other side. If anybody jumped on after, um, again, I apologize for the issue with the uh, the video quality. I've lost internet, and I'm I'm just using my phone as a hotspot, and we're doing this. So um, stay tuned. We'll we'll get a, a a better quality video out to you from from Montana and Sharkfin. Uh, everybody who's tuned in, thank you. Uh, we're doing the best we can with what we have. Haircut looks great, Montana. Thank you. Thank you. Forgot how much mannequins shut compared to human hair. <laughs> Your comb is is controlling your sectioning, but it's also controlling your elevation and where you're pulling the hair to to make it either more a line or less a line or more yes. blunt. Correct. Yes. So as I go up the head, it gets to be more blunt rather than um, elevated. 
just to create that like faux undercut feel to it and it really helps get that nice under shape. And 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 you use this particular technique because it you as you mentioned earlier you cut you cut a lot of curly uh, dense text uh, textured hair correct yes so they're always especially heavy um, and they you know everybody wants to go shorter but they don't want to get that bursted out triangle look that you always see memes of <laughs> and so I kind of tweaked a little bit with one of my clients. She's one of my experimental girls all the way from hair school. I think the first time I colored her hair, it took me six hours for like a basic highlight, you know, because we're all super slow when we first start. <laughs> and she's at the point now where I do cut and style her hair within 45 minutes as well. All right, so for my size, I do like to section and part based off of the angle I want the hair to be at. So if I want it steeper, I will go even more, or if I want it more blunt, I will flatten it out a little bit more. But since we're doing a rounded one, I am gonna do a little bit of an angle there. For this, I like to comb right off the part and comb back, section down, and I do like to point cut as well. The sides, I won't texturize as much just because they always have less hair on them. So I'll really focus more on the notching and point cutting than I will texturizing. You're doing this entire cut point cutting, correct? Correct. Would you like to explain why? Yeah, sure. So I like to do it based off of point cutting because they normally, my clients anyway, I don't know about everybody else's, they like the blunt bob, but they don't want it to look so squared off on the ends. So they really like a diffused line, but they don't want layers at the same time. So it helps create a softer hairline. So they're not just like squared off, if that makes sense. Perfect. Can you see that side? I'm not trying to, this is my awkward side. <laughs> That's right. It's awkward for everybody when you're trying to produce a, a video. So looks great. So your comb is parallel to your parting. Your parting is slightly diagonal forward, and then your yes. finger position is the same. 
Yeah. Second section is still slightly diagonal forward, so it was parallel to the first section. Combing down zero elevation. Finger position is parallel to the parting and point cut. Yes. Another great view, too, of how a swivel shear helps with point cutting. How you can go in and see how elbow is still by her side, uh, wrist is straight. It is so much more comfortable. I honestly don't think I know how to use regular shears anymore. <laughs> I'd probably feel so awkward. And it's crazy. I'm the only one in my salon out of 13 that uses a swivel. Everybody else uses just a standard. So everybody who's tuned in today, if, if you've been on um, other webinars, uh, let us know where you are um, and also what you would like to see from us. If, if this is a school watching and you would like to see something specific that you're working on in, a, in, in theory or a, a specific cut or whatever, um, please, please let me know and we'll happily help out however we can with your, with your virtual education or your distance learning or whatever it's called. So at the end, I always like to make sure the front two sections are even. We're slightly longer on that side. Pixie cuts we already did with Anthony Edge. You can find that on our website and our YouTube page. Later this month, we'll do pixie cuts again, but at the end of the month. That one was so good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it was that. fun. <laughs> it, it's, a great, it's a great cut to add to the arsenal. It's very simple to follow along to make a pixie very simple for anyone who struggles with it. And you want to add a, an easy technique, not easy to remember and execute. Please watch that one. I will be trying it on my mom next time. <laughs> I finally convinced my dad that she looks better with short hair. <laughs> All right, so we're about finished up here. This is where I start checking just for movement to make sure that it's not too heavy. Obviously, I wouldn't strangle my client. It's just she's shaking around. <laughs> All right, can we see the U shape pretty well there? on how it curves around the neckline towards the front. But yet it still appears blunt. But you have that undercut under there where we created that lots of texture. So the blunt pieces laying on top of here, they have something to move with, especially if a client is wanting to style it with beach waves. It really creates effortless waves on top where they don't even have to really curl under here. They more of curl these top sections up here and use some nice texture spray to really shake it out. And through the sides here, you have a nice angle towards the front. But at the same time, you don't have just this blunt surface of like a block. You can really 
point through the texture there. And again, it moves nicely and with texturizing the back just from that ear to ear use section, you have around the same weight as the front to the back. That way, if they wear it straight or curly, you don't have this awkward, big, huge hump back here compared to the front. You can still get some nice lift if they like more volume back here, but it'll match the sides really well. And then again with this side. Looks great. Thank you. No problem. So uh, uh, everybody, thanks for hanging in there, Montana. I'm going to see what this video quality turns out like. If okay. if we need to, if if it's not good, I'll send you. We'll I'll send you another mannequin, and and we'll just record it, you and I, and then get it out there to everybody. If that's okay with you. Yep, that's perfectly fine. All right, fantastic. <laughs> thank you, thank you for joining us, uh, Montana. Thank you for everybody. Everybody who tuned in, thank you for those of, of you who, who stayed with us throughout. Most of you did. And um, I'll, I'll be reaching out. I'll be reaching out to everybody to either share this video with you as long as the quality is good. Um, if not, we'll re record and get it out to you soon. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you so for much, guys. Us. Be oh, safe thank out you. there. It was fun. Yeah. I will. Right. I will enjoy right. my day of Wednesday. <laughs> 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 Take care. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.